Good, well, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to the ODI. My name is John Mitchell, and I'd like to welcome you to the launch of the Contribution to Change Guide. I'd also like to uh, welcome our online viewers and listeners. I hope you can see me, I hope you can hear me, and we'll have an opportunity to hear from you uh, later in the event. So, let's begin. What is all this about? Um, what is this contribution to change guide, and why is it important? Well, I think that the, the guide, from my point of view, has emerged uh, as a very sensible and progressive reaction to the debate around impact evaluation that's been going on in the humanitarian community for so long. And you know, the issue of impact has been troubling many of us for many years, and it's an issue that's very close to, to ALNAP's heart. And we published our first study on impact assessment about five years ago, in 2008. And I think there are two main findings from this, really. And one is that the um, uh, two main findings of a conceptual and a met methodological nature. And so on the conceptual side, the practice of impact assessment had tended to be viewed as a, a kind of a rather linear men, uh, problem uh, linked to a kind of log frame mentality, if you like. And anyone that's ever done a log frame will know how difficult it is to squeeze complexity into a framework where inputs lead to outcomes that lead to uh, uh, outcomes which in turn lead to impacts either positive or negative. And of course, we all know that in life it's much messier than that. And so much of the underlying rationale in the old days seemed a bit flawed. And on the methodological side, um, we looked at how impacts have been tackled in humanitarian evaluations. And I think that our findings can be summed up with from one sentence that I found in the report. And it says this, and I quote, a standard sentence could almost be inserted into all the evaluations that were looked at, and it would read like this. It was not possible to assess the impact of this intervention because of the lack of adequate indicators, clear objective baseline data, and monitoring. And so we discovered that in spite of the demands for impacts and the rhetoric around it, um, in reality, there wasn't much of it about. Um, so the impact assessment situation in 2008, and in 2008 didn't look great, um, defined as it was by both conceptual and methodological challenges. And to be frank, there, there wasn't a great deal of incentive for agencies to take it on in the first place. And so that's why I think that this guide is a, is a big step forward, because it presents or uh, faces these two challenges head on, and I think presents a more pragmatic and realistic approach to, to assessing change. And for me, there are two main points in, in the guide. And the first is that conceptually, the guide explicitly recognizes that changes take place at the household level and are of the interplay of a number of uh, uh, forces that come together. So change isn't just a linear process, but a unique coming together of many factors. And the second thing is, its methodological starting point is that change needs to be understood from the point of view of the individual household. And so changes and reality are not externally constructed in, in log frames, but related very much to people's own personal experiences. And so for these two reasons, I think the guide represents a very progressive and welcome step forward. And I'm sure it will make a great companion piece to the ALNAP Evaluation Guide for Humanitarian Action, which you can find on our website, of course. So, before I turn to the, um, the panellists, let me just give you one or two housekeeping updates. Just to state that everything that happens now is going to be on the record, so you should be aware of that. If the fire alarm starts, which I doubt it will, but if it does, we should all make our way out through these doors there and there, round to the ODI reception. And could I please remind everyone here to turn off their mobile phones or put them on silent? That would be very helpful. So let me now turn to the panel who have been involved in some way in researching and writing this guide. And first up is Marcella Tarazona, who's sitting next to me. 
And Dr. Tarazona is a senior consultant at Oxford Policy uh, Management. She's an environmental economist with more than 13 years com experience combining academic and consultancy experiences, and she focuses on disaster risk management, climate change, monitoring and evaluation, and experimental economics. That sounds interesting. Uh, then at the end we have uh, Roger, Roger Feud, and then Dr. Roger Feud is currently a research fellow in the School of International Development Studies at the University of East Anglia. He's worked in many countries around the world, and his research has focused on vulnerability, response, and adaptation to natu natural hazards and climate change. Sitting next to me is Vivian, uh, Vivian Walden, who is currently the Global Humanitarian Monitoring, Evaluation, and Learning Advisor for Oxfam, based in, uh, in Oxford. And previously, Vivian's worked in both development programs and humanitarian co uh, programs in numerous countries, as well as being part of the response team in major disasters such as the 2004 tsunami. And she holds a PhD in evaluation. PhD in evaluation, yes, that's right, from the University of Manchester. There are not many of them about, I don't think. No. Mm. <laughs> okay, uh, let, me, let me also just turn to... Daniel at the end. Uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel McAvoy is uh, currently a senior lecturer at the University of East Anglia in the School of uh, International Development. He's previously worked with CARE International and for AusAid, the Australian government, for 15 years uh, with a focus on working on countries experiencing conflict and or humanitarian crises. So let me explain how we're going to proceed. We're going to start with a short explanation from Marcella about how the guide uh, was researched and put together. And then our main event, of course, is the uh, presentation of the guide itself, uh, which Roger will be presenting uh, in a minute. Um, I, should tell you that I should tell you that Roger's throat is not at its best at the moment. And so we might have to do a little bit of monitoring and evaluation of your <laughs> capacity to speak as we, as we go forward. Uh, but we'll keep our eye on that and see what happens. But thank you for coming, and um, you're obviously not quite as well as you ought to be. Um, and then we're going to finish finally with a short reflection on uh, partnership, which Vivian is going to give us, uh, between Oxfam and um, University of East Anglia. And I think here we can learn something about future partnerships between NGOs and academic institutions. So that's the structure of the day. We've got about 80 minutes left. Um, and so, Marcella, over Thanks to you, please. 